So James' school has uh, this thing where they do a, a defense. They have a thesis and then they defend the thesis for, uh, as a part of their sort of senior project. And so uh, James and I decided that we're going to do the sermon where he's going to uh, defend his thesis and I'm going to be the person asking questions. So that's how we'll set it up and, and here we go. All right, so James, to start off, uh, please uh, state the thesis that you're going to defend and tell us um, what the main sources that you're going to be using for today. Uh, the thesis is um, that, it, that the church should focus more on doing good than being good. And I'm using um, some readings from Genesis 1, the lectionary we all just saw, and um, some Greek readings, writings by Aristotle and Plato. All right, so you said that your thesis is that it's better to do good than to be good. And to start, can you tell me what uh, the Genesis story and then the letter from 1 John has to say about that topic? Well, the Genesis story, I mean, we're talking about the very first creation story, has God looking upon creation and saying it is good, including the individual, in my opinion, the individual pieces are, therefore, as some good. So the Genesis story, to me, seems to say that you are good. It's the intrinsic part of being created by God. Um, the John, um, the first John reading, and it says everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. And earlier compares um, everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. So it seems like in John, in order to be good, you must do good in some way. In order to be righteous, you must do righteousness. So it sounds like, uh, at least in John, we have this idea that the way to become good is to do good. And so that there's some sort of relationship between being good and becoming and doing good. So let me start off with giving you this uh, thought experiment. Uh, imagine that you had a friend who came to you and said, uh, I'm a bad person, but I would like to become a good person. And so what I want to do is I want to start going to Pasta Cristo. I want to start doing the Humane Borders trip. I want to start doing various things. Tell me about how, what the Genesis story would say to that friend of yours and tell me what John would have to say, and then maybe we can talk about the Greeks after that. But let's first just talk about those two. Well, the Genesis story would seem to disagree with my friend's premise that he's a bad person. Well, the Old Testament obviously acknowledges people can do bad things, um, Cain and Abel, Sodom and Gomorrah, Babel, and so on. The first Genesis seems to say that we are, at our heart, good as things created by God. So Genesis would seem to disagree with him when he said he's a bad person. John would agree that in order to become a good person, uh, sorry, he should do something that is righteous. And I personally going to presume he made orders is righteous. So he's in the orders. Okay. What does uh, what do Aristotle and Plato say about it? Well, Plato, we're gonna kind of have to play with a bit for him to say anything. Plato very discreetly does not want to talk about the good from what I read, but from what he said is the good is something you know, you like learn about, and then you make laws to commit to try and do actions in accordance with it. And in order to know about it, we get this very long, beautiful rant on why it won't rant. Yeah, I don't know if rant can be <laughs> by Plato on why philosophy is the best thing ever. Um, Bias, of course. And uh, Aristotle, on the other hand, would seem to agree with First John to a point that if you do a good thing and make a habit of doing good things, you become good with some qualifiers, which are if you know what you're doing, some of you can use your community borders, if you know what community borders involves doing, if you know who is the sort of receiver of the action, who's doing the action. You're doing it for its own sake, so you're just saying good because it's good, not, for example, because I need the extra 10 volunteer hours to graduate. And you are not easily swayed from it, so being informed that um, I don't know, your parents aren't going to make you go this year doesn't immediately convince you not to do it. So, from the, your experience then, leaving the authors, we're just looking at your experience. Oh, I guess actually before we do that, so is there a difference between 
what First John says and what Aristotle says, or is First John just basically repeating what Aristotle says? First John seems to get rid of all the qualifiers. It's if you do something right, you are righteous. So he may be more as an example. Whereas Aristotle would be very concerned with what do you intend? Do you know what's going on? Do you know? Are you, is it easy to convince you not to do this? John seems to be very much more interested in you're doing something that is right. That's all that matters. So what do you think? Can you, let's use the Humane Borders trip. Could a young person participate in the Humane Borders trip and not become a better person as a result of it? Could they participate without becoming better? I think you could do something right without becoming better. Um, the Humane Borders trip, if my parents forced me, I don't think that would necessarily make you a better person. If you're not terribly invested in it, you might make you a better person. Um, a similar thing might be if you receive a court order to do community service. While well, community service is a good thing, the fact that you have to be ordered to do it sort of takes away from that. What if you're doing what is good uh, in order to uh, avoid damnation, for example? Um, <laughs> Well, in that case, there seems to be it seems to me that you're doing it out of fear. That you're you're in a way being still compelled or forced to do it. So, if the only reason you're doing good things is to avoid punishment, it doesn't seem as uh, that whole um, honest as genuine to me. Because in that case, you're with fear as a motivator. That just seems odd. Whereas if you were um, truly become better, it seems like you would do it, I kind of agree with Aristotle in this case, for its own sake. Um, so it's sort of like doing something out of fear, like if you do something out of fear of punishment, use the quarter example, which is actually very similar, you're doing a good thing because you're afraid of punishment, then that doesn't seem like you're going to become a better person. So doing good can cause you to become better. But doing good, you can certainly do good things and not become better. That's what I'm saying. So let's now talk about being good. Is it possible to be good and not do good things? Well, it seems to me that if you were good, you'd feel a sort of compulsion to do good things. A good person would want to do good things. Now, I don't see any reason why if you were rendered unable to do good things, you would suddenly no longer be good. Um, if you are shipwrecked on an island, or somehow the last person living on Earth, you are unable to do many good actions. You're not able to help out your fellow man because there's no fellow man in your range. But I don't think that would suddenly somehow make you bad or not good. So, so, so you could. What you're saying is you could be good and not do good, but only if there's no good to be done. Is that what you're saying? Right, I'd be very confused as someone who was good, but for some reason chose not to do good. So at the very beginning of this, your thesis is it is better to do good than to be good. Mm -hmm. you, they're, they're both positive, but it's better to do good than to be good. Yes. But it seems that you have now said that you can do good without becoming good. Mm -hmm. But if you are good, then you will necessarily do good. So do you want to switch? Your thesis, or I don't understand, how is it possible? Why is it better to be good, to do good, than to be good? Well, because even though there are times when you can do good and not become good, I think if you do good, one, I think if you do good long enough, for lack of a, oh yeah, no, for lack of anything, long enough, you will begin to think about what you are doing. You will start to try to figure out, is there, why I should be doing this? So, um, to use humane borders. I did not necessarily jump at the call to go to humane borders the first trip. Um, and I did not, at, at the first, very first trip for humane borders might not have made me a better person. But after a while, I began to think about the actions or stimulated thought. And that, through that thinking and understanding, I began to become a better person. The other thing is when you do good, I think you make two, you can make two people better. Because you can make yourself better, as we said, but I think you can also make the recipient better. Because if the recipient, if you do good to someone, you're, you're showing that, at very superficially at least, you consider them worth doing good, or someone considers them to have worth, to be worthy of doing something good. And 
that person can go on to think, 